Hyped energy in here, lots, lots of positive energy here. We're jamming. You already know you heard a tune on your on your eardrums, you saw it on your screens. We're in the big conversation, and we're here with none other than the brother Stanley. And you know, now the house is is hyped. We saw you coming in grand style, we saw the energy, we saw everything, and we're happy to have you. In Ghana, we say Aquaba. Thank you so Uwezo. much. Thank you so uh, much. Lenny, so much. how do you say it in Ghana? I don't know. Which one is Ojeko? Me, I, Ojeko is, is like good morning. Ah, okay, but I say to you people that my airway is better than, your than my ga. If people okay. keep asking me how some words are pronouncing ga, I'm, <laughs> so, I'm sorry, You're but I don't know. Ah. Yeah. So, 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 so. Um, Aquaba means welcome. Yeah. yeah. You, you figured that. We got yeah, that one already. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the other yeah, one is Wezo. Wezo. Wezo, which also means uh, welcome. And so okay. we're glad to have you here Thank in the big you studio. So much. Stanley um, and John. Mm, great. So huh, where do we begin? How long have you been in Ghana? Let's start from there. Um, um I mean Ghana's been um you know, Ghana has always been a very good idea to be honest. Uh, we've been in Ghana for the past I think five days for me. Then I think for James it's gonna be That's the third day. It's gonna Ghana's be the third day. day. Fourth. Yeah. You know, so I mean, it's been uh, a beautiful roller coaster just coming into the city and and seeing the people, the beautiful um, dance crew from the airport. You know, rocking with the Nima boys. You know, uh, the bikers and just seeing how across the city has manifested in full bloom. You know, in my eyes, and I'm like, damn. This is a people that are not only lovely, but they are in love with progress. I'm like, whoa, from the penthouse where we're blessed to stay, you know, you can see the city and see the buildings, the scrapers touching the sky. You're like, whoa, this is something super amazing. I love the growth, to be honest. And um, big shout outs to the team and everybody that has made it happen for us to come here. And, you know, like some popular football team um, goes by never walk alone you know I had to make sure that I implore the presence of the wolf mm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. and James Beaker as being a wonderful artist in his own right you know having this wonderful single that we just dropped a couple of hours ago well like no it's gonna be great that we connect in Ghana and I've told him that I'll only love him, him and I to connect in cities that carry my heart. Hmm. You know what I mean? So I was like, yo, James Beaker is, I'm not the host of this show, but welcome to Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> Like You're a brother to the brother. show, Thank so you, you can bring you. on as many uh, family members as we want. Now, speaking of being in Ghana and the whole experience and appreciating our landscape, what was it like connecting on the All African Games? I mean, that's a platform that's close to our hearts as well. But to have you on that and have the whole collaboration foster on this land, what, what has that experience been like? Brother, I'll, I'll not be long. I said, Brother James. <laughs> They have called me to come to Ghana <laughs> to come and give them water, water seasoning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now. So let's just come and make love to the people musically. You know what I mean? So for me, it was just like a very beautiful platform because I mean, we're just talking as if it's something that is easy. Mm. Not before my old brother, like closing out the all African games in front of the officials that were there, the president, and seeing how they honored um, Madame Fatma of, of, of the FIFA, you know, the, 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 um, the former FIFA secretary. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just a fan of Africa. You know, seeing how besides the music, you know, the people that work to make sure that Africa is proud administratively, mm -hmm. 
you know, we're also honored. For me, it was a pleasure. Because for me, I'm like, it's not just about time that we like saying it's our time. People just say it's our time, but they don't measure the impact of what, the, of what that really means. Yeah. The significance right. of being here is... It's huge. It's huge. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Seeing how there is a young force growing. And in every single Ghanaian's eyes that I've seen, you could see no matter how much pain everybody might be feeling individually, there is a big glimpse of hope in the eyes of the people. It's inspiring. You know what I mean? So there is no... There's always one thing to come to a country... And it's another one to experience the love and the engagement that the people do have, the patrioti the patriotism. And I may not be I mean I may I may not have played sports this season, but you could tell that every delegation that came left happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. their quaba in grandeur nature that you guys really have. So please gonna clap for yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what does that word mean? Grandeur, Grandeur nature. nature. Uh, it's hard to bigger than yeah bigger than anything. Yeah, okay. it's but to be fair, it's, it, it's hard to to translate and get the feeling. Mm. It's just like when in English, in when French people say there's a je ne sais quoi, you it would, you do, if you don't understand it. It's hard to, but just to say it's in words. splendor. Right, right, right. You can right. feel like okay. the energy. I'll definitely, I'll definitely dive into your preparations for the closing ceremony, etc. But I want to speak to James as well and get your experience of landing in GH. Um, it's the experience and the vibe, what you're feeling. That was my first time actually in Ghana, so I felt truly welcome. Like Stanley is saying that um, that's the hub of Africa. And when you see the, the future of sports, uh, uh, gathered in one place, it feels special, you know, it feels sincere, and uh, we're just so happy to be a part of it. All right, well, you're coming from a place where you have a fusion of languages, English and French. Here, predominantly, we're only English, but you have a fan base, or you reach out musically also into our space here. Now, in the creator space, I want to know from your know, family, from both of you, right? Starting from James and then Stan, what, 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 when you're creating, what, what, what language is running through your mind? Who are, you, who are you thinking as? Because you're speaking impeccable English and then he just dropped a gem of French on us. And <laughs> you understand, that duality seems to be always operational. Who is in charge? But to me, you know, music is about being sincere with the public and with who you are. And I was born in France. I grew up in France, but my music experience started when I moved to the U.S. Okay. Mm -hmm. I started making music and big placements for, for the likes of Puff Daddy, uh, Ja Rule, Snoop Dogg, uh, and a lot of other artists. So it came naturally for me to speak and, and sing in English, you know. And um, now that I'm trying to reconnect with my roots, I'm trying to be as sincere as possible and make sure that I dive in to my Cameroonian side too, mm. you know? And um, I think it's, it's definitely, you can feel it through my music. Yeah. How, how has this um, connection to your roots been, you know? Um, because I think that maybe for the past four or five years, we've had a lot of people wanting to find their roots, find their ancestry, you know, connect with their roots, come back home, you know, like they say. How, how has it been for you? And this is to both um, James and Stanley. Oh, man. That's a question for James. Now I'll be boy for Tamale. Yeah, uh, what yeah, you no, talking about? Yeah, man? actually, but you've also, you know, been the world over, you know. I got you. So connection to your roots is, you know, an important thing for you as well. I got you. So, so basically, that's why me and James, we do connect well, because he, um, he is born in France, bred in America. Um, I'm born in Cameroon, bred in Cameroon, then probably when, you know, I don't want to call it success because I'm still to know what success is. But when we got a little bit um, known, you know, you travel the world, mm -hmm. you know, you'd be exposed and da-da-da-da. I mean, I didn't, for me, ha if I didn't have, like, probably my first hit track from Cameroon, I wouldn't have ever seen America. 
Uh, you know, I mean, yeah. but James saw America without yeah, even having the heat. Right, yeah. So it's it's different. So now when we we come together, you know, even me having a passport is as a result <laughs> of me yeah, becoming success. kind of famous. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So the story is different, but that is the beauty and the difference between us two coming to put those stories together mm -hmm. and making sure. Oh shit! Sorry. No, no, it's um, okay. Um, he grew up next to mac and cheese yeah. but i had to graduate to eat and even <laughs> yeah, see mac so and cheese yeah. mm -hmm. and to even see if i even like it as compared to watch it yeah. right you know i mean the, the, you know there's um yeah, yeah. you understand now so uh, but it, that the journey that, started at different ends yes yeah. for you yeah but but okay so for james then how how is the connection to the roots and coming back home to the motherland been for you but to me you know the 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 history, my history is being stripped away, mm. you know, when I was young because France depicted Africa not fully, if I may say, mm. you know. You always saw the negative sides of it. And um, that's actually when I reconnected with my dad, mm. the late great Manu Dibongo, uh, 10 years ago, that I got to see my roots differently. I started to ask questions and obviously I was traveling a lot. You know, um, we all connected today. We get to have options, we get to have information coming from everywhere. So we are able to, in a mature way, to see things differently. And I heard that African call, just like a lot of people from my, gen you know, from the, my generation, you know, something was missing. And to be complete, to feel complete, you need to know the whole truth. You need to, to know the, the, the story. And even musically, I was doing a lot of placements, but I felt like I could do more with a more sincere yeah. music. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I had to reconnect with my roots, with my dad, my, 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 my family, to be able to be, to feel complete. fresh, Home. complete, mm. and unique. Mm. Yeah. Mama right. say, mama sa, in, mama in, 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 in feeling <laughs> complete and unique. Stanley, I want to understand when creating music and reaching out to the fan base, Yeah. again, Watch it and all that, but you also grew up in a totally different space. Yeah. Are you creating the music for, like, are, are you thinking you're pushing it for me, for the people in Cameroon? That balance, how do you, how do you work that magic to know that, okay, this is the point where this hit is going to work here for my Watch squad. Yeah. And it's going to work for my Cameroonian squad as well. How, how do you, how do you ascertain that? That's, that's really the magic of it, right? Yeah. Honestly, the use question is very, very important. And I really want to thank you for that growing up you can only you know you're only as good as the information you have mm. you know what I mean you're a product of your environment so growing from you know growing in Cameroon we had to use our local slangs our local lingo to make sure that the people can connect you know but at some point when you already expand you know change is constant you have to be like oh wow what else can I do you know to make sure that we take the love and trust that the people have given me on a global scale mm -hmm. It can happen that you do that with a mix of local, um, with a local mix from Cameroon to the world. But at some point, you just there's some risks that you also have to take if you just want to be innovative, if you want to innovative or a global icon, and that's what I strive to be. So for me, this is going to be my 11th year active in music. I thank God that everybody is blessed to yeah. be 11 years right. active. Because it's not like, you know, some people mm -hmm. be like, I'm here for 11 years. It's maybe they active stopped three years. Three years. Uh, no, and no, no. they came back. It's like fr from Don't 20 stop. to 18 when I, when I started, I've never stopped. Mm. What has that been like? Competition? Bro. What's the landscape like? Beefs? Nice. Um, genre changes? Um, what's the earning like? Uh, royalty systems? Bravo. Payment platforms? Bravo, promotion? Brother, you need to adapt. You need to adapt, especially when you are from Africa, because there's a sound that people dominantly would like. Hmm. You know what I mean? For me, I was like, the music I make, if it doesn't resonate with my grandmother, then it means I'm not making good music. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because Cutting the, across audiences. Yes, because just focusing on the young people is great, but they don't have purchasing power in most countries. You know what I mean? They have following power but they don't decide financially, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So for me, making sure that my music could be danced in the presidency by the president 
or by the first lady was very very important but today 11 years after you know honestly i just make the music that i like hmm. if you like it you like it if you don't like this one today you will like it tomorrow you know what i mean so i don't over calculate in terms of i think from a perspective of a cameroon artist if i'm being honest with the context of cameroon i've already done everything i could to put them on the map with the other f with the other people that also contributed but me as a brand at stanley and i think i've already given what god wanted me to give in terms of contributing to make sure that cameroon music is where you know it it's is supposed to be you know what i mean so i also want to give a big shout out to the other f the other peers mm -hmm. of mine that have also been doing that job so for me right now my worry is no more local i've already done it mm -hmm. you know what i mean so even right. if i die today i have hits for days yeah. that will be played forever mm -hmm. you know what i mean that's not the struggle for me anymore so what i love is to make sure that we try as much as possible to leave that comfort zone Mm -hmm. of Abi Baba, right? Mm -hmm. To go and learn new stuff, to make sure that you can touch the world from from a place of honesty and from a place of, you know, forget about... Because, you know, one of the things that also kills creatives in every country, especially the old ones, is that that thing that I was... The local I champion was, mentality. You know, yeah, that thing I was... from being something better. Yeah, you know what I mean? So you can... And your environment, when your cousins, your sisters, your brothers are calling you boss, boss, <laughs> boss, boss, if you're not careful, you know that you have arrived. But when you check the charts, you'll be like top five. Oh, wow. Some new cats that are there. Wow, what are they doing better that you're not doing or mm -hmm. that you were not doing? Or what can you... It's not, it's not a bad thing to copy. Yeah. It's not a bad thing to copy because nothing's new under the sun. Yes, it's just yeah. people adding their own specific touches. You know what I mean? So for me right now, the music I make right now, I don't really calculate if my local bar guy is going to like it. If I like it and I can dance to it on my own TikTok. If you like it, if I don't like it. It's up to you. So you you from mentioned from you there. mentioned going from Cameroon to global, you know, and also you you were um, a TV and radio personality yes. before you became an artist, right? Um, in combining all of your years, you know, of experience in media, mm -hmm. at which point did you realize that mm, I've actually made it, you know, I've um, you know, um as big as you know, I dreamt of being when I was that little boy. Um honestly, I've always been doing making music because you know in the in school, you know, we're dancing to be cool. You know, to make sure that we have all them gal them um, <laughs> you know. And um fast forward started rapping. But I was living in a small city, let's say I was in Let's say I was in Tema, mm -hmm. but things are happening in Accra, right? Mm -hmm. So I had to come to Accra, which is Douala, to make sure that I have exposure. But coming to Douala, which is the economic capital and the capital of showbiz in Cameroon, it wasn't easy for somebody coming from a small place like Bafusan because people in Douala considered us as... Ah, you guys are not good enough. You guys are not urban enough. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm trying to mean? So, even having placements or having space to really just be seen or heard was hard. So, I had to kind of like go through media to introduce those that were already existing in that oh. city. Oh, yeah. okay. You know what I mean? So, coming as a top or an aspiring artist from Bafusam, coming to Douala, you could not just enter like that. Yeah. I had to come and serve the ones that were Some already there. Foundation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Host them, you know, do you know like do a lot of voiceovers and da 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 while waiting for you to be known. So I kind of like put a standstill or a pause on my music hustle. Did a little bit of media hustle. Then fortunately for me, I was, you know, um, people said my voice was special. But, you know, I'm getting old, so it's getting crooked, so I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, it's the same it still thing. sounds good. Those, yeah, jinx. What you're talking about, man. So, <laughs> yeah, so I had this. I was a columnist on this beautiful show called Moa. Mm -hmm. 
and I used to do the the info segment, you know, mm-hmm. and the, the people were not seeing me, but my voice was too nice. Give us an info info segment. That is hard. Like I've forgotten exactly. those things. It's been far. Oh, mm-hmm. Just give us a high. No, no, but it was it was it was it was in a hip hop touch. You know, I mean, hey, what's up on the Kuala Fami? Hey, Khotal, we're dropping a new album. Mm-hmm. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and after when I finish, you know what it is. Hey, now we'll we need a like, translation. Damn, that hair guy. Damn, you know what I mean? So it was really really crazy. It was lovely and. After that, when I got a little bit of attention, I was like, oh, wow, maybe it's great for me to just, you know, since I'm already in the space I've served, you know, let me see how I can conquer. So it just happened that that small boy from Bafusam to Douala As became a the next, mm-hmm. you know, the next you had, thing you had that o- revealed. You had, o- you, had always, you had always been a hip-hop guy, even in media. Yeah, that's what you're talking about, man. So, so what, kind of, what, kind of, what kind of projects were you listening to? I'll, I'll come to James. I just want to what you're talking about? APMD, mm. Naughty by Nature, okay. you yes. know. Uh, okay. You know, Guru, what you're talking about? Guru mm. the Damager, mm. um, Sean Price. Okay. Wow. What you're talking about, man? Like, yo... Uh, <laughs> so you were just waiting for your moment to just yeah come out. biding I mean, like, time. I've, I've been, like you know, I've been as a young as a young. I've been a very old head. Like I used to listen to a lot of old hip hop. You know mm. what I mean? Like if you tell tem- me tem- if you listen to Sean Price, like yeah, yeah those are on the ground. Like people yeah, like Kev Brown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, wow. Kev Brown. Like those are the kind of guys, you know what I mean, that I listen to, you know what I mean. Even James is shocked. Yeah, I'm almost there. <laughs> you, 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 know, you know this, as, huh? as a producer, I know all Kev the guys. Brown, right. I don't really know what to say. They're, 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 brother, <laughs> people like um, Master Ace yeah. and Edo G, that's my era. Wow, you know what I mean. So, so um, what, that. I I wanted to find out what the dominant genre of music was in in Cameroon at the time. Was it rap? It was rap. Wasn't rap. Wasn't rap. What was it? Yeah, it was Makosa. Mm. Bukutsi and everything. So, you know, hip hop, whether I like it or not, for most of us Africans of a certain era, that thing really touched us. You <laughs> know what I mean? Like our trousers, yeah, our baggies, yeah, yeah. our culture was huge on us, you know what I mean? Mm. So that, that I mean, would have been for Ghana what you know, um hip life mm. was yeah, at yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I'm telling James that even the way I speak today is as a result of the over US influence. Mm, you mm. know, so it has already stayed in me. <laughs> so some people when they hear me speak on interview, they're like, that guy wants to sound yeah, American. Why? Just, uh, I've been talking like this from <laughs> when I was yeah, back music, in school. The music, the music. You know, so and then now as you just grow up now being on radio as well, you know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, blah 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 blah, you know, yeah. so 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 it's just crazy. Mm. So it's just like yeah, man. So, um, so Makosa, Makosa was the dominant genre at the yeah, time. Yeah, but I was like, let me let's change, let's change, let's change stuff because you know there's always been a youth, a recalcitrant <laughs> youth that, that always sets the pace. Yeah. That doesn't want anything local. Yeah, you know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah. We yeah. just we respect it, but we're telling the other that no, you know what I mean. We are, we are the yo yo the generation. What yeah. you talking about? You know what I mean? So. Which, yeah, which I, I also find intriguing, and I'm sure James, you may want to corroborate that with Franz as well. Right. Um, France. Yeah. Yes. yes. France is also known for their hip hop. They have a very unique yes. hip hop, you know, approach. Or sometimes even with, even with the drill, that we 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 hear, you know, there is there's a unique approach to how they they do their music, yeah. right? But for you, having corroborated with some of the things he's seeing with hip hop and stuff, was it the same thing that you were introduced to, or you had a different genre that you were on on time? No, a different experience. You know, I started. With hip hop, you I mean, the pop obviously with the, the likes of Michael Jackson's, Whitney Houston, and all that. But right. when I was going to school, hip hop was big. You know, mm. uh, that was the era of the DJ Premier, Wu Tang, mm. uh, the Fugees, mm. and that's how I got into music. Wow! No, oh. first as a hobby, okay, it was truly a passion. That went along with my, my style and me playing basketball because I was a baller for a long time. Okay, okay. were you a handler, a power forward, shooting guard? A shooting guard. Oh, come on now. Yeah. All right, I see, <laughs> I see, I see. Okay, wow. I even played um, on junior college, D1. Oh, oh so wow. Was not to, not. <laughs> <laughs> were, you aim, were you aiming, ever dreaming to play for the NBA? I was, you know? I was, I was, until I understood that. That's, 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 J. Cole, the, that's J. Cole's story right there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. And I then see. music got... Uh, got to me naturally. Mm. I started making more music. I mean, it was truly a hobby until like the people around me told me that, yo, you're really good. Mm. You know, you should take it serious. 
and I started making beats for like local artists mm. and I got my first break with Akon's uh, label. Wow. Mm. Oh, and I, and I got a, Yeah, comic music and I got an internship there and I started working with songwriters and that's how I got my foot into the business. I want to know. And wanting us to, you know, know James more, you know, through the music that he has produced and churned out. Can you run us through, you know, a few songs that we are likely to know, you know, um, wow. for, for, the, for the work that you've put in over time? I worked with Ja Rule in 2000, 2011. Um, I did two records for him called Believe and Take It to the Top with Kalina. Okay. Um, what else? I did Booba uh, King record on the Zero Nine uh, project. Booba is like a huge uh, a French rapper mm -hmm. uh, who, who broke barriers even in Canada and in, even in the U.S. Actually. Okay. Um, what else? I worked with Snoop Dogg. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, I got a few what was, what was that? What, what was that yeah. like from a hobby? to now with some of the biggest names on the planet, production. What was it like reconciling that? Like you're coming, waking up and like, yeah, I'm really gonna do wow, this. Which was a dream because things really moved fast. Uh, as soon as I got my internship, I started making placements for those guys and be in the studio with them. So I didn't have the time to realize what was going on. You know, I was in already it. immersed until I got really deep into the music business. And uh, I understood that there's music, but there's a business also, Fighting. you know. Yeah. I want to I stay on that, right? Afrobeats has taken over the world. Yes. You coming from a French hip-hop background, pop uh, influence, working with some of the biggest icons, the journey of Afrobeats and your interaction with it, I want you to run us through it. It's truly beautiful what's going on in the world right now because you, you see African music, especially Afrobeats, conquering every continent mm -hmm. it's crazy even in, in japan where my brother is going uh, mm. uh, in a few days actually to perform and um what i like is that there, there's always cycles in music and in life right because if you take it back to the 70s the 60s and the 70s the u.s was truly aiming at looking for the idea of what african music and african artists was that's when the Fela Kuti, the, the Manu Bongo, the Angeli Kijo emerged, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But at that time, they didn't know about the business. So they were most of the time hustled, you know, and truly, uh, um, uh, how can I say that? They dreamed about being in the music business and being liked by American people. Mm. Right now, African people know their value. African music is truly big mm -hmm. and they know the business so they are able to function and, and um, go with the flow obviously but being careful about their business yeah. and that's what's truly beautiful because the environment is, has changed. We are not uh, as impressed as we were, um, as we were back Previously. then with the US market you know. Now we know that uh, whether it's in Ghana, um, Obviously, Nigeria, South Africa, they know their value and their music is big and it's truly beautiful to see that. Yeah, I, I Talking about, about knowing their value, um, there's a conversation of seeking validation, right, mm -hmm. um, from the Americans or from the Western world, let me just put it that way, where, you know, we want to be nominated. I mean, That's if true. I say we, the African artists want to be nominated, you know, for Grammys, they want to win the Grammys and all of that, right? Do you think there's a possibility of um, we losing, you know, our hold on Afrobeat? Hmm. Great question. I don't think so. Because you got artists that are independent now, that are truly taking care of their business, they have their own team, and they, they still seek validation from, from outside because we're mm -hmm. trying to be global, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, the U.S. market is still the NBA, whether we like it or not. Mm. But we Please. know our value now. And all the talent that are coming out are mostly coming out from Africa. And even the U.S. now are trying to emulate the sound, yeah. which is something completely new. Mm -hmm. When you see Chris Brown, even One Republic, uh, yeah. 
I think you, you, yeah. you were the With one. Oja Piano. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. they jumped on Ama Piano. And it's crazy to see that, but it's, it makes sense, you know, because now we are proud of our artists, yeah. we are proud of our music, and we know that value. On that same topic, okay. right, of Afrobeats and global impact, there's nothing more powerful than an idea. And this is, I want, I want to take Stanley's take on There's nothing more powerful than an idea. And you have big names like Burner Boy saying, Afrobeats lack substance and its time is ticking down. Whiskey saying that, you know, he's no longer an Afrobeats um, artist. We shouldn't refer to him as that and all that. But on one hand, there's a whole school of thought that's pushing Afrobeats. Where, what do you think? Do you think Afrobeats is it? And this is probably just, you know, that's just fluff. We should ignore it. Oh, no. Uh, I think Afrobeats has forever been an ideology. It's a whole, it's a movement, you know, so... That's the one thing that has made a lot of Africans reconnect to their roots as well because, you know, where politics fail, you know, culture intervenes properly. Mm. You know, like um, I've been, um, I've been, I've been traveling a lot, my brother, you know what I mean? Like, especially when Afrobeats just started breaking in because I've been in America a lot, a lot. You know, I've, I've been on tour with David though for a couple months when, you know, there was that wind of change kind of like where African music you know because before um, we had African music in general you know the legendary Angela Kijos and da 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 um, you know hip hop from Ghana or South Africa but the whole Afro whining your waist movement like for real for real for real <laughs> it took off a certain kind of period you know it's I mean you know London has always been a capitalizing city too where a lot of our brothers perform big time and it's been crazy but when the state started taking you know Afrobeats into consideration you know where you could see someone like Mr. Easy do the PlayStation Theater and in in, uh, in New York we were together uh, David doing venues like that David connecting with Live Nations and doing a lot of stuff like you know I saw that it became something that was like damn this thing whoa it's crazy, you know what I mean? So I just believe that we should definitely make Afrobeats to become a culture as opposed to a genre or a movement, yeah. right? Because you see, for example, um, the difference with Ama Piano from my own perspective is that Ama Piano, unfortunately, sometimes the songs are bigger than the actors, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, but it's a way to that they dress, there's a way that they dance, there's a way that they act attitude wise so there is culture right but but i would love us to evolve to a point where there's a way of dressing afrobeats if you're saying you're going to beyond the sound yes like how hip-hop has an identity yes Mm -hmm. dressing out dressing afrobeats speaking afrobeats you know i mean if there's a way that if you don't speak you know if you speak it means that you you understand what i'm trying to mean because at the end of the day you know it's 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 we have to go beyond you know there, there should be like merch this you, 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 yeah. yeah. So maybe maybe that's where Bernard was coming from when he said there was no substance because the way you talk, the way you dress, the way you move is the substance that validates the genre, right? Uh, yeah. I could be hip hop without being a rapper. Yeah, mm. you know yeah, what I'm saying. Mean, but yeah. right now, I can't be Afrobeat unless I'm on the song or I'm doing a TikTok challenge. Yeah, or you're yeah, a producer. Or or producer or, or, yeah. Yeah. So, so he has to go a little bit deeper. But I think when he was talking about substance as well, because because he know we all know he's a great lyricist, like it or not, you know. So. It was also high time that, you know, on our records, you know, you hear some beautiful, you hear substance in terms of the messages to be heavy, the metaphors and everything. That's where hip hop, yeah, a, a good hip hop background can come into play. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? To help create Yeah, that. To, to create, you know, those metaphors and all of this, you know. So today, for example, myself, I just, I've been, you know, I have, I, I have a beautiful, entourage of young writers that you know come with ideas you know to make sure that you know the african gentleman project that oh, I'm working nice, on, nice, nice. you know should come to life and when you listen to my music you could hear punches you know what i mean it seems like the guy may be singing but you could, you could believe like this guy is coming from a hip-hop perspective because the words do punch though we need like some very beautiful and simple hooks but you know that time of prikata prikata prokoto prokoto <laughs> It's, it was great, but you know, today, if your lyrics are not powerful, 
it may be a little bit complicated because we already have the attention of those that love not only to dance but also love to listen and learn some new stuff and be like oh damn that was deep you know what i mean so it's, it's did it's, you think we do you think we are really achieving that with afro beats i think to be honest the new guys are, have a big pen game what you're talking yeah. about the pen game is is crazy like, so that means the future of afro beats will move away from just having a and a good time dancing to the groove and actually paying attention. That, that's actually reversing and coming back to what our individual genres of music in Africa has always done. Uh, that's great. So basically, I think we, there was a time where we just introduced the, the sound to the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To be like, oh wow, there's a different sexy genre that exists, mm -hmm. you know, that is not too far from Zouk. Mm -hmm. It's not too far from Calypso of because we're I still am. on the 4-4 four, four pattern, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Then, besides that, you could listen to an ideology. That's why for me, I'm very, very proud of the African Giant album. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because you could hear from beginning to end that was a real album. It was just like uh, you were listening to, you know, like, you know, from the interludes to... It's seamless. That's yeah. a beautiful progression. A yeah, a be so you could hear from beginning to start, like, oh, shit, this is a storytelling. For real, for real, for real. You know what I mean? So that was what you call and simple and beautiful English a body of work as opposed to just a bunch of sounds that you infuse you know what I mean so that's where I think it should be going then now every artist has their swag their identity the way they move the way but I think it will be beneficial that we have codes to be like oh shit today I'm having this Afrobeat party it's not just because of the music it's also because of maybe the way we community. speak yeah. community mm -hmm. the Back way the we dress thing. is it that maybe when you're going to an Afrobeat party, maybe the must have is to have, you know, let's say, you know, a beautiful tribal painting on your face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like something that may not be folkloric, but may be identical. So that we, we can we see, for example, when you see people like uh, great artists like Siriki Dabdiabate or, or uh, Yusundu, when you, you see Bruce Mali coming out to watch them, everybody Every has country, everybody yeah. has Bubu, yeah. everybody mm, has Abada. The identity is there. You feel that yeah. it's yeah. like it's a village yeah. meeting. Right. <laughs> you understand? So right. I think too, I think it's great that it's very very open. We've opened up, you know, because the the genre is very very popish. But it'd be great that it ha it comes with a style, you know, so that if you're going to uh, if, if you get to New York psychologically, you want to just buy a I love New York hat. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, do, you think, do you think this thing that you talk about, do you think it's because it hasn't really, really brought Africa together as it's supposed to be with the export of Afrobeats? I, th I think it's, it's truly hard to because there's so many different cultures in Africa, mm. you know? I think Afrobeats is a vector like it opened doors right. mm -hmm. for other styles and genre of music coming from Africa mm -hmm. to go along and, and uh, to be discovered too. I agree. And I think that's our responsibility mm -hmm. to bring our own uniqueness and, and identity to the table now. Mm -hmm. Now that we know, okay, Afrobeats is going global, mm -hmm. it reflects uh, a generation and, and uh, a certain language as well. But we have so many countries too mm, that mm. deserve to be on top. On top, right? Yeah. So yeah. let's work towards that, you know. And mm -hmm. that's what that's what yeah. we're trying to do with our music too. Mm. Yeah, I so try to infuse my cosa into my music. Of course, Bikuti, because I'm not from Nigeria. I mm. respect and I love what they're they're doing, mm -hmm. but I'm not trying to jump in the trend. You know, I'm trying to bring what I know to the table as well. You know, how easy or difficult is that? Because um, all respect to what Nigeria has contributed immensely to the exports of Afrobeats, right? It has become also um, a wall of um, preventing, or shall I say, a wall of um, impeding on unique identities. Mm. So you do a record, and someone says, you sound Nigerian. Mm -hmm. But this is you being original to yourself. Yeah, it's good it's and a, it's bad. It's a right? problem. It's yeah. a problem, right? So that's, yeah. that's, that's why I asked the question about how has Afrobeats united the true sounds of Africa? I think I understood your question. I was just trying to 
enjoy my time in Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not entering into long talk. No, because it's, it's a conversation. You know? Because it's a no, conversation. No, that's no, no, I understand what you mean. Uh, you, 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 the, the, you, there's a lot of wisdom in this too, because you're, you're saying it in a nice way. Um, <laughs> but I, I get what you're going. I, I understand what you're saying. But it's a, it's a bad thing for somebody to tell me that I'm sounding Nigerian, mm-hmm. because. Our music, basically, if you want to see, in the essence, is probably all the same. Mm. If you listen to Daddy Lumba, mm. if you listen to people like the King Sonia Days, Manu Dibango, um, Toto Gyo, mm. it's crazy. I, I've been in Ghana for a couple of days, mm. and I listen to her to High Life. That mm. dun, 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 mm. dun, 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 yeah. that guitar. Mm. It sounds a bit like Makosa. It's the same like the Makosa yeah. guitar. Yeah, and it's that same Makosa guitar that a lot of artists from Nigeria back then also took. Yeah, to finish up their tracks. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Because that that thing. You know, and the Congolese will also tell you that it's theirs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In that regard, do you think... You know what I mean? Afro- so basically, we have the same instrument mm. that were played at different patterns, patterns. and times yeah. Mm. Yeah. with our music. Mm. With the guitar is very dominant with hip life. That's right. The guitar is very dominant with Makosa. Right. The bass is very, very dominant with Makosa. Yeah. Right? And the guitar, the electric guitar, the acoustic guitar is very dominant with Congolese music. You know, I mean, with rumba. So, at the end of the day, I think one of the solutions is just to make sure that, in as much as you want to embrace a culture, and that's why I respect uh, James not only as a performer but as a producer, is that we can get to the studio and then he's like, "Okay, yo, Stanley, I know that this is the kind of sounds that you're loving now, mm-hmm. but I, from a producer's perspective." Mm. I can make sure that we drive it in a way that is not too far from home. Right, right. But it's also very open and popish. That's the advantage of working with people like, like James who have not grown on the continent because mm. they have a popish approach mm. of the Afro music. So they're able to yeah. experiment more. Yes. So that's why if you see records that have been doing well in the Afrobeat space, a lot of them, uh, some of them are done by some young Africans that were born in London. Yeah. You know, because they have a popish approach and they have radio friendly sounds and even samples that will easily play on the international so it's just where you are in your career okay, but right. honestly i think it's also sometimes offensive when you make music as an african then they'd be like oh you're sounding like this person more I, that culture is for all of it's us all of us right. so yeah. but with that so, said yeah with, with that said yeah. um stanley would you take us, you know, into the music landscape of Cameroon a bit, right? Because now, take it or leave it, when you mention Afrobeats, you know, the first country that comes to your mind is... What's Cameroon. the first country? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's be honest. The no, first country I'm honest, Cameroon. Is, okay, for you, right? But for oh, the okay, larger... for me. Okay, wait. I'm, I'm just saying, for the larger um, population of people, it will be Nigeria. Okay. Just as um, Amapiano will be to like um, South Africa, <laughs> and then Hip Life will be to Ghana, right? So I just want us to get into, you know, the music landscape in Cameroon as well. How is that going? Because for us, there's been this conversation of, you know, Afrobeat and hip life and high life and Azonto and reviving certain genres. Should we leave it? Should we, you know, push through with it? You know, we how is it like for you in Cameroon? Before I even get to Cameroon, I think we should revive it. Azonto 2.0 should be done mm. because I think the likes of Hughes, they did it early enough when the crowd was not so ready. You understand mm. now? So they did it. He did it. But the crowd was not really ready per se. Now people are ready for it. So I think if the young people come and revive that genre, or maybe even resample those very songs, don't be shy, don't be proud. That is because it's a fusion song. Redo it, you know what I mean, and make it great. You know what I mean? Al Qaeda, all of those dance moves is something. Is those are things that we all vibe to. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So with Cameroon. Uh, like I said, we have Makosa, we have Bikutsi, we have Mangambe, we have Mbole. Mbole is like the local genre right now. It's very local and crude. But the dance steps are crazy. If you're not well, <laughs> you cannot <laughs> dance it. And if you're unwell, 
know that if you have malaria, if you dance more, you're just getting well the next minute. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Spiritual. So, yeah, it's crazy, you know. I mean, those are like very, very beautiful and per- cool, very unique, unique yeah. genres, you yeah. know. Yeah. What I mean, yeah, which they, the world needs to know about. Yes, yeah. maybe they might take time to internationalize the sound, right? Yeah. I mean, because one thing too with music, and I think that's where I will forever give it to Nigeria, is that you cannot force somebody from liking the sound. That's right. Some songs from Nigeria are just too sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah. they are sweet. If yeah. you don't like them, it means that maybe you're, yeah, it's a natural problem. gift. They just know how. You know what I mean? So you listen to a song like Soweto. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 This man has abused you and misused the song. Need be, you, need <laughs> <to> be, <laughs> you need to be somebody that is sad or sad something really wrong. To not like <laughs> because, the, because the whistling on the beat, so yeah, the producers yeah. are on another level. level, yeah. level I yeah. because sometimes it's not even when you see from the mix. If you're a technician, you would get that honestly. The yeah. work is mostly yeah. done by the, the, the producers. Yeah, the, producers yeah. Yeah. the musician just came and did a little ballad. Yes. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's 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 undeniable and it's great. So I just believe that you know every nation has to try as much as possible to come together the producers have to come together the radio people have to come together mm. and be like how do we do to push our agenda forward mm. because i'm telling you my brother even if you're not making the money that an artist is making just from a standpoint of pride there is nothing as beautiful as seeing a Ghanaian opening you know, or, or performing at the coronation of the queen in England. Mm. Mm. You'll feel proud and happy for that person. Mm. And you want to be even more happy if that person also deserves that spot in terms of their sound and their quality. Mm. Mm. So I think it's just good that every nation, Ghana, Guinea, Cameroon, you know, the people should come together and, you know, work on the sound design, mm. making viable so that mm. if I play my sound somewhere, people should be like, oh, wow. You know how you want to play music and then somebody is guilty for not knowing it? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's how it has to be. You well, know? Let, let me just interject. Let me just, just, a, just a brief interjection. Because of what you said, mm-hmm. I was going to ask, mm-hmm. what do you think the South Africans have done right so well with Ama Piano that there is a fine distinction between Afrobeats and Ama Piano? For um, some reason, I've noticed that the conversations are being had about Ama Piano. It's not grouped or put under Afrobeats. They talk about Afrobeats uh-huh. and, and Ama Piano. Okay, right? I, I, I think it's just like Afrobeats and Makosa. So it's just very different. You know, uh, that's why I believe that Afrobeats should be an umbrella term because even with the Afrobeats, it's Afrofusion, right? Yeah. Um, I'm coming up with something called Afro Energy. Afro Energy. Yeah, that's just how I feel. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And some people are just like, I'm doing pop from africa mm. or african pop yeah you know what i mean so i think i'm a piano the great stuff that followed with i'm a piano is more of the day that it became a culture mm. a way of dressing uh, you know just people dancing with one beer in their hand yeah they never have cops yeah. beer is in their hand like that you mm. know with small small you know the south african bob hats yeah, the guys are just happy <laughs> You see DJs, yeah. DJs now have like proper hype people behind yeah. them. You yeah. Know? yeah, doing yeah. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm, boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. Ah, I will. And the dance, you know, South Africans are gifted with melody yeah. and dance. dance. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. guys yeah. can yeah. sing. Yeah. Yeah. Choirs <laughs> in South Africa, you yeah. see them in yeah. every drunk junction. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they can sing you cry, my Come brother. On now. They're just God has just given them yeah. soul. Yeah. Not yeah. every nation has it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they do have it. Hmm. And um so I believe that it's also probably as a part of a revolution because also maybe, you know, every artist or maybe you know, there are nations that maybe have not been on the spot for too long. No, how will I say? There are nations that are very important to music in Africa. Ghana, South Africa, countries that can host proper events. Maybe you may not have, maybe the lineup may not be 100% from here, Mm -hmm. but you have the infrastructure to host big lineups. So I believe that it also got to a point where maybe South Africans were like, yo, we need to push our agenda, you know, because it's hard. You know, because the biggest artists in South Africa at the time, 
you know, I, my brothers, I mean, rest in peace, AKA, you know, Casper, those, are, those were like the biggest acts that filled up stadiums. Mm. We were all aware when Casper was filling up back yeah. to back. Yeah, yeah. the FNB you know, stadium. Back yeah, to back. I used to. I, I I think there was another guy that I you know when I was in South Africa last year. There's another guy that also did something like that. But those guys maybe they're st very strong in Southern Africa, but they're not. They didn't cross over, yeah. you know. So um, what I'm saying is, is 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 what I believe that you know it was just time for a nation that has given a lot because you know from Channel O awards, all of those things were happening there. So Quite at some tall. point. You know, I think it was just time for them to be like, yo, bro, we need to just have something that is very unique to us. An identity. An yeah. identity yeah. that will be international. I don't know how intentional was the push, but I'm just so happy that it's happening and it's a culture. Brother, see the way, brother, you know, I'm in Europe like every time. When I'm at piano songs, uh, people go crazy. I play, people yeah, go yeah. crazy. You could feel like, Anybody that is speaking in that, that shwa, 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 <laughs> when, when I'm a piano comes. <laughs> I think it's a connection to the I'm, IDM. I'm telling I'm telling you, like, um, the way they start singing it, you'll be like, oh, yeah. wow, like, you know, the people I was telling you about, those yeah. kind of people, like, you, but they start saying chwa, la, bam, things that they cannot say on the normal, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. not yeah. in the song. Yeah. You know, they start using some kind of funny words, you know, like, oh, cool. That's great. So I think the dance thing of it is very great. That's why myself, I would love to, you know, just dance and, you know, be able to connect. Because dance is something that, you know, you cannot, you cannot, you, you, a woman that loves to whine with her whine, you know what I mean, can never go wrong. So if you make music for those people, I mean, for this beautiful set of humans, you're doing well. Mm. And that's it. So I think for me is the togetherness, mm. that movement thing. Because myself, we're all on Instagram where we saw, Uncle, I think it's gonna be Uncle, Uncle Waffles. Waffles. I don't know why a lady's, a lady's name is Uncle, by the way. <laughs> but, no, but I think it's unique, honestly. I, I, like, I think at that, yeah. all of the craziness, you know what I mean? Like, you see 10 people dancing the same, boom, 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 like, oh wow, boom, like, okay, cool. And I think that's where, you know, and I think it's also timing, because mm. everything has a season. Today we're talking about Afrobeats, yesterday was Nombolo, was Marcos, I was Rumba. Because the likes of uh, Kofi Olamide, the way selling our BRC in France, mm -hmm. like 10 years ago. You know what I mean? So it's just a season. But I love that this season now with everything Afro is coming with the era of social media being at least very, very, very huge. You know, so if you work proper, you can, you can hardly be ignored. So, is yeah. there a competitive drive? in Cameroon for platforms, international platforms, like playing the O2, playing here, playing here. Do artists consciously chase down uh, as a point of validation for their career, or are they more focused on developing the genres and just pushing the, the culture of their sound, like you're saying? I can't speak for um, every other artist, but I can speak for myself and James. We definitely, we definitely want to fill up the moon. <laughs> so okay. I think, you know, a lot of people have already turned the old two to the old three. Yeah. Let's see how God blesses us, mm -hmm. you know, for us to just fill up the moon. Mm -hmm. So it's it's always great to connect and make people scream out of your home. Like I'm very proud of what we have achieved in house. You know, um, people showing up and turning up for us, but seeing what happened here in Ghana, brother. It's huge. You mm. know what I mean? Like people that are not your core people per se, you know, just being in love with your presence. Mm -hmm. That means a lot. So I think, I wouldn't call it validation, but at least it puts you on another ped pedestal. Mm -hmm. If somebody doesn't respect me for, for what we did this weekend, I think <laughs> the person is not honest. Hi yeah, problem D. <laughs> so I want to I wanna dive into your collab, your new collab, your new joint. Tell us some more about it, James. Uh, the record that we did is called Celebrate Blessings. And um, I met Sorry, can you take that again? Celebrate, Celebrate Bless Blessings. Blessings. Okay. Celebrate okay. Blessings. Okay. And I met this wonderful guy at the AFCON in 2022. Mm. We had the chance to perform during the closing ceremony of the, the African Cup, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I saw right away a talented artist and a true entertainer. And the fact that he came from where I come from, 
meant a lot, you know. So mm -hmm. we got close. I got to talk to him. I uh, understood that he was truly intelligent and that we had the same, um, vision. same vision. He wanted to bring something fresh to the table. He's you know? lying. What, I took intelligence from him. <laughs> 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 no, but truly, we wanted to, to bring something fresh to the table. And, uh, you know, me coming as a producer, I grew up with the likes of the Pharrell Williams, the Just Blaze, the Kanye West, mm -hmm. the Timbaland, and they all had their sound. They were not trying to sound like anybody mm -hmm. else, you know? Mm -hmm. and so they were kings in their own way, and that's always been my aim, my drive, you know? And um, when we connected, I was like, yo, Stanley is just amazing. I would love to create something with him, you know? So we connected. We uh, stayed in touch, and when I had the record that I thought would be, it would make sense, I called him right away. And he vibed to the record. He, he immediately started working on it, and the rest is magic, you know. And uh, yeah. what we wanted to do through that record was to celebrate the people around us, mm -hmm. celebrate our journey, uh, the people that have been stuck, stick with us throughout, you know, the good and the bad, mm -hmm. and um, being proud of you know, our fall, our weakness, our strength, and keep going, you know, and that's what the, the record is all about. Nice. So it's, it's obviously definitely out on uh, DSPs. Yes, it's out everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. What are any, any special plans for promo video coming up, tour, anything oh, that we need to look out for? Honestly, celebrate some blessings. Honestly, um, yeah, of course. I mean, we just had a meeting last night. We're drinking some sparkling water. Ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, ha. Yeah, you know, trying to get a bougie a little bit. Um, yeah, but after drinking some palm wine in the daytime, mm -hmm. day, you know, by me boy. You know, so um, we just, you know, just we're just speaking. We're like, okay, probably James is gonna be great that we just, you know, work on an EP, mm. joint EP together. You know, work on joint projects and also involve, you know, some beautiful grass field artists mm. from Ghana, from uh -huh. Mozambique, from South Africa. Just make something Pan African, cause I think it's high time that we abolish passports. You know what I mean? You oh, sorry. Yeah. Preach, girls. preach, preach. Because, I mean, or visas, mm -hmm. you know, because... Within the African continent. Yeah, because, mm -hmm. honestly, I feel safe, brother. Mm -hmm. I'm I was born on Friday, so call me coffee. Coffee. That's right, yeah. So, <laughs> so, there's no reason why I feel legit in Ghana. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and that's the same way you have to feel if that's you right. are in Douala. Right. So, we just want to work on a beautiful project whereby we can also not bring only our talent and also see how we can partner. Mm. You know, with grassroots artists from here, you know, and and just tap into the culture and learn out of the love. You can, I mean, collaborating with Ghana can never go wrong. It's a blessed nation. Yeah, I mean, you you, you, you have a record with uh, Sarko, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and probably you know, for me, I'm at that point where no limitations, you know, in as much as we made love to Accra. You know, we have to do the same thing and in, in ask them. Yeah. People want to feel us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's travel. Let's go. Take a car. Put some fuel. Go see what the people are thinking. I think lasting relationships with genuine connections and just, um, you know, laying down beautiful projects that mm -hmm. can benefit not only us, but your little brother. Mm. But your little sister, mm. like your cousin, is great. Is our is his true time? You know, sometimes, and to be honest, my brother, somebody can be very, very, very talented, but he just needs somebody that was sent to make his talent viable. Yeah, that just so we are all looking for those people. Sometimes you can be. You can have this radio, you can have the infrastructure, but you just need just one simple guy to come and hold the mic or to come and tell somebody what to say so that person's talent should be very, very viable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Star makers do really exist, you know what I mean? They may not be the stars themselves, but that's why our prayer is to make sure that we always connect with the right people mm -hmm. in our right season. So that the water water should be nice, you know what I mean? Yeah. The water water I should, should be nice, out, I wanted to find out... Um, your collaboration with Sark, because you performed a record on uh, yes. the All-African Games. If you want to talk about it, just briefly. 
um, how it came about, you know, what has been the feedback after. Mm. I mean, Sark has paid his dues, you mm. know, and I'm sure having on a record like that was a blessing. But what's mm. been the feedback like back home? And what other Ghanaian songs have you noticed or have you identified that is interestingly making the rounds in Douala? Um, you know, I mean, Terminator is a song you can't ignore. Terminator? Of course. Wow. That's a, that's Dope. a worldwide, you know, yeah. sensation. Dope. Um, um, yeah, I mean, like, I connected with Sark in 2014 because I was winning Best New Act at the MTV, MTV African yes. Music yeah. Awards, and he was winning Best Hip Hop. Yeah. You know, so, uh, we connected via a beautiful brother from Ghana called Sally B. Mm. Sally B, his name is Bright, he's in America now. Mm. So whilst I was on my flight to Durban, um, the guy who connected me with him was part of, part of his entourage, Celebi, mm. and I was kind to him. I just put him in my own entourage because he left because they were already in Durban, but he was now coming. He was now coming, right. so I put him in my my convoy. You know, I mean yeah. VIP and yeah. everything. So. I was like, he's like, what do you like from Ghana? I started giving him names. I'm like, I like this guy called Sarko Dia. He's like, ah, you're sure? <laughs> ah, let me listen to your music. Played it for him. Next thing he's like, wow. Was like, it was like he just made the connection and just happened real A random act of kindness. You know what I mean? So I was like, wow, you know, and because me as somebody that, you know, started with hip hop and everything, you know, I... I know everybody that is doing well. Yeah. You know, and I also, you know, from the likes of Grandpa, you know what I mean? What you yeah. talking about? Yeah. Bravo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, what you talking about, my brother? You know, I, um, how do you call this other beautiful manifest? Yeah. Brother. Yeah. Like, he had this taxi series things that yeah. he used to do yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. I used to yeah. watch. Yeah. You know, like, Ghana is great, to be honest. And, uh, um, but, you know, some artists, I would know them because I'm an artist. But they may not know the songs or where I'm from. So mm. till I did the song with Sark, that's when now the attention came from him that. also came mm. into Cameron and everything. So mm. for me, I think that was a real, a, a real gr- crossover, crossover. Mm. crossover project. Because what I like it or not, we may all Africa is very big. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not sure it's every day you hear about Cameroon because probably mm. economically, you know, we don't deal in, but maybe we don't, we don't, we don't barter together, yeah, right? So. Yeah. It's hard. So if it's not true, this music connections, you know what I mean? And, you know, and, you know, and, you know, loving people like Efia as well, mm, mm. you know, Ghana's always been a very beautiful, mm. and the artists are really amazing. I don't know if they know, uh-huh. but honestly, and lastly, f- lastly, for me, I wanted to um, find out, um, you've had the opportunity to perform on, you know, continent- continental stages. You know, you just did all African guests, but you were also at the Ofcon, mm-hmm. you know, um, stage as well. Um, what what is unique about these stages compared to, you know, concerts and normal, you know, what's 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 the bragging, you know, feel that comes with being on such stages? Mm. As a hip hop artist, <laughs> uh, to be honest, I at this point in time. I mean, the bragging comes when is your first time, right? You know, I mean, now it's a little bit of like <laughs> that was okay. that was a bragging. That was the bra- yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say that. I was just gonna okay, say that. you know, but um, that was a flex on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. flex. I, 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 I think it's 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 we kind of like you know, you know, there's just a lot of different. I mean, we're just blessed, you know, being part of this institutional events because you know there's so many fish is in the ocean but the you're blessed to be chosen you know mm-hmm. and the good thing about is learning how to work internationally because the team is crazy mm. it's, they are very rigorous with time they're uh-huh. very you know uh-huh. say not more than seven minutes uh-huh. right. you know we started with five minutes you know not more than five minutes and, you have, to, and you have to mind your intro mm. and your outro mm. you know so you have to do if they say five minutes then you have to do like probably like a 457 so you can but give yourself you 10 out. minutes for the next, you know, so <laughs> you could cues, times and everything, you know, it's very professional. By the time you're singing, somebody's speaking in your ear, mm-hmm. your mic is on, <laughs> baby, 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 walk out, walk out. So it's, it's a little bit, you know, so you learn a lot about precision, you know, mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, 
and you learn about appreciating other people's jobs as an artist because you know sometimes we're just performing with things that probably you know we are the beat all now nah. mm. you know what i mean mm. you have sakina working on the background you have cecilia working on the background you have bawak working on the background you have a lot of people baba mm. jibril you know what i mean um uh, uh, we, we it's just so many people mm. you know what i mean so you could tell people are moving so so, so you're just a little piece of you know you're just that yeah, face but that honestly shit, yeah. but there's a lot of good lots going brother, on brother that you don't even see so much. Yeah. you know what i mean so dope, dope. so it's 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 great and then the, the lights as well mm. you know those bah, those artifacts then don't just come you know that expensive to have is proper production you know mm. what i mean it's just mm. like this lights pyrotechnics you know so yeah. you know it's crazy and the come with is millimeter is the computerized so it's not like somebody's pressing oh, so it's not at the seven minute it's going pa pa pa. Mm, mm, it's, they tell you don't don't move too much because you know it might hurt you. Yeah. So make sure you have insurance. So you're like, feeling, <laughs> you know, your feeling is not like any hello hello like concert. Yeah, it's, yeah. Right it's good. Now, it's man. good. It's good to know that apart from the show, like you said, there's biz, and it's been great like having this conversation, chopping it up with you. Will um, I mean, Lenny's gonna pay some bills before we wrap up. Go ahead. Yeah, yes, with Telesail, um, you're about to get into. Um, you know, a world of magic and also have the world at your fingertips because the wait is finally over. Telesel is here. Now you have everything you want and need, quick and reliable communication, stress-free money transactions via Telesel Cash or T-Cash. If you've been receiving, you know, some notifications on your phone, you see T-Cash. Transforming your big business ideas into success stories with Telesel Business and more. Connect with Telesel and enjoy a world of endless possibilities because with telesale there is no limit to connections telesale connecting energies connecting energies and indeed the energy has been high here inside the big studio the big conversation on culture daily i'm sure you listened in on plus 89.9 as well we've been here with ace producer james and of course the man of the moment performer on the all african games closing stage shutting it down stanley Eno. and we just want to say a big thank you from the culture daily family it's definitely been a beautiful moment having thank you, you. Know, we look forward to you coming back I look forward uh, to Kofi, you coming i didn't back. get your your james i didn't get which day were you born? What day? Wait, what day? November 13, uh, 18. No, okay. which day? Monday, Tuesday. What day was that? What? Oh, I don't know. Wow. <laughs> no, but it's Kojo. typical. I'm going to give you Kojo. Monday. I'm going to give you a Monday. So yeah. we've been here with Kofi. Well, how's he finds and out when he was, hey, when he was born? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we know you can. No. We, we've been here with two legends and two gentlemen who have definitely been thank you so much my people. we want to thank you yeah. for, check for out. Some honoring thank you so much check out the record you know celebrate blessings yeah, celebrate out blessings now blessings out you know. now Stanley and just get on the Spotify to pop up for sure I this has been Culture Day you already yeah. know Danny <laughs> Lomote Olele Salvador your host Serial we've been here shutting it down and we'll see you tomorrow same place same time and we out you know